Hello, Chet. It's Saturday, the 22nd of September 2012. A warm welcome along to this week's United Kingdom talk. And before we start, we must say hello to someone, someone who was moaning last Sunday, actually. I do a karaoke at a place in Lewisham in London every Sunday night, at a place called 286 Bar, Lewisham High Street. Every Sunday night, karaoke, 8 to 1. Quite a nice little venue. We've got proper stage lights there, a little stage uh, sort of at the front of the venue, which is uh, quite quite nice and uh, the manager there dean was moaning the other week because i said oh did you see the chat show this week you know because you've got to advertise yourself haven't you Eh? you must advertise yourself dears yes and he says no well we never get we never get a mention because we never get a mention we never get a mention so there we are hello to dean and uh the uh the people with the money stephen and dave and uh, lovely bar staff, uh, especially Charlie, Charlie Bar Lady. Oh, she's a, she's wonderful. She sings lately. Lately, I must da 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 da. I don't know the words to that one. It's not really my song. That one. Lately, no. I'm more of your um, Frank Sinatra, uh, Barry Manilow, um, uh, Shawaddy Waddy. Do you know any Shawaddy Waddy songs? Let's go for a little walk Ba-da-da-da, under the moon of... Do you know that one? That, that's me. Not really doing the Stevie Wonder. She comes up and does that. That's, that's Charlie. Who else? We've got uh, Aaron works behind the bar. Who was very drunk one night. Very, very drunk one night after work. So I had to get him a lift. I gave him a lift home. And get this, right? So I gave him a lift home. And I'm sort of looking around. He lives in Peckham, which is in uh, south-east London, quite near Lewisham. And... We got near his house, and I'm, I'm, I stopped the car. He probably thought something was going to happen at that point, but it didn't. Uh, I stopped the car, and I says, I says, is that school over there? He said, yeah. And I said, what's the name of this road? So he showed me the name of the road, which I cannot tell, I cannot reveal his address to you, okay? Um, and I looked around, and I said, do you know, I think that's my old primary school. And I looked and it was indeed an old Victorian school. It was my old primary school, which I haven't seen for 40 years. Amazing. Just the weirdest sensation ever. Coming down that road, knowing that I had been in that school at some point. None of, I've got to admit, none of which I recognised. I just knew that that was my old primary school. And uh, brought back only one memory of that place, really. I don't remember anything at all about that school, except that one day I'd been naughty. Can't remember what I did. And um, the secretary had got... Oh, look, the cat has appeared. You haven't seen her for ages. Katie, come here. Come on, darling, come solo. Up we get. Look who it is in the studio. Katie. Oh, sorry, darling. Katie is here. There she is. You're right, darling. Come and say hello. Have you got anything to say today, Katie? No, just looking gorgeous. Can you purr into the microphone? I'll try to get to purr for you. She is actually purring, just a bit closer to the mic. Hey, say something. Say something. No? Not saying anything? Okay. Do you want to sit on my lap or where do you want to go? Yes, you can say there. Um, oh, she's gone on the floor. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes. I'd done something naughty and a secretary was, I think, telling me off. And she'd gone into the office. And I followed her to the office. I, I was only about seven or eight years old. And I... <laughs> And when she went in there and closed the door, I locked it from the outside. <laughs> and I then went and hid in the boys' toilets. I always remember that. Hid in the boys' toilets. Can't remember what happened after that. That is the only thing I remember about going to that primary school. It was the weirdest sensation ever, you know, dropping this uh, this bloke home and um, uh, 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 and that happening. But there we are, you know, so quite a nice memory, really. So, yes, we will say hello to those people at 28R6 Bar in uh, Lewisham. Once again, join us for karaoke there every Sunday night. That's in London uh, between 8 p.m. and uh, 1 a.m. In the morning, all right? Are you happy now, Dean? Though you might as well switch off. There's no more mentions, Dean. 
Oh, he does moan, dear. There's no more mentions at all, OK? He's been very busy there this week. They've got a new DJ box and been pulling wires through and things. I don't think it's him that has got a clue what goes on. It's, the, it's one of the owners or, or the man. I'm not quite sure the whole setup there, but I think it's one of the owners, Dave, who does all the wiring. Dean wouldn't have a clue. He would not have a clue how to put two bits. He'd get these two bits of wire, twiddle them together, you know, put a bit of tape around the outside and say, oh, that's done. You know, Bod's job. Is that right? You've got to get Dave in to do the proper work. Oh, and I must tell you, when they moved the DJ box there, I don't know what sort of builders they had there, but they had these, usually in a DJ box, you've got, look, where's the cat gone? You all right, darling? Do you want to go out? Do you want to go out or do you want to stay in here, darling? What do you want to do? Oh, she's pacing up and down behind me now. What? Do you want to come back up here? Hey? Eh? Did you hear that? She's meowing now. She does talk a lot, Katie. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Uh, usually on a DJ box, you'll have some sort of plastic or glass bit on the top. Well, uh, obviously, you're better off to have glass because the plastic always scratches. Don't matter how careful you are cleaning, plastic seems to scratch. You're better off with a bit of glass. Uh, and they've put these three pieces of glass across it. And the stupid builder hasn't used bits of rubber between the screw and the glass. And, of course, he's done it up too tight and every single one of them has cracked where the screw grows through the glass and into the bit of wood. How blooming stupid is that? What sort of builders they've got? They must have done it on the cheap, dear. I think they must have done it. Either that or Dean did it and he's trying to blame someone else. That's more likely a story, isn't it, eh? <laughs> So, hello to you lot. Um, I was thinking the other day, cycling to the swimming pool. Now, I go swimming most mornings uh, between, uh, sort of sometime between 10 and 12 o'clock in the morning. I missed it this morning because I've come up here, come up into the office, doing bits and pieces. And I looked at the clock and I thought, oh, oh no, got to do chat show as well. A little bit late to do that now, you know. And, um, but this week I was... Cycling to uh, the Virgin Virgin Active Place in Wokingham, where I go. Nice, little, lovely. Pa Wokingham is a lovely town. It really is. I suppose it's. Um, I, th I, th I think you would you could class it as a small to medium sized town. I reckon maybe a small to. Me I live in Bracknell. That is a very very large town. Okay, that is a small to medium town. And cycling through there the other day and. At the time that I go to the pool, there ten tends to be a lot of elderly people walking around. I'm doing a shopping or walking because I go past loads of houses and all that. Can, can I just um, blow my nose? I did bring a bit of paper in somewhere. What did I do with that? Uh, there it is. Look, just a moment. Just a second. <laughs> oh, dear me. Yes. And I cycle past some, some beautiful places. It's quite an expensive area to live, but nevertheless, very life. You really do feel quite safe walking around there. And often I, I cycle there. And if I'm going to my, um, uh, bank or building society, I'll just stop my bike, prop it up against the window and walk in. I, I don't bother locking it. It's one of those places. It really is, you know, one of those places. And I was thinking about all these elderly people that live there, sort of in their 60s. And you know what? I don't... And, and then I was thinking of my, my sister as well, who is, of course, a nanny now. My sister is a nanny. Ha! That little girl I grew up with when she was tiny and teeny, same as me, is now a nanny. I was thinking about her as well. She's not in her 60s. She looks it, you know. <laughs> My sister looks like she's in her 60s, but actually she's a couple of years younger than me. Not much younger, no. No, not much younger. Anyway, I've, I, actually, I've got to say congratulations to my sister. She has lost, over the last couple of me months, a stone in weight. Well done, sister. A stone, that is, that is some doing, isn't it? A stone in weight. I've been trying to lose weight. My weight is stuck at 11 stone... Was it now? 11 stone, 11.8. Don't know why. 
Yes, the I had a load of crisps and things. It remained at 11 stone, 11.8. The day before, I had lunch, and then I had nothing until breakfast the next day. It's still 11 stone, 11.8. I can't work that out. Anyway, carrying on with that, uh, congratulations to my sister for losing that stone. Very, 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 very impressed. Okay. And thinking about these elderly people as I was cycling to the place. And you know what? I don't think it's so bad at all getting older. I really don't. Okay, fair enough. You haven't got other people throwing themselves at you, looking for love all the time. Okay? But these people, I suppose, going by my mother, uh, who's not here anymore, and my nans, who, of course, not here anymore, and my dad, not here anymore, going by them, and also watching these elderly people out there, I would guess they get up pretty early, probably somewhere between 6 and 7 in the morning. They get up, go downstairs, have a cup of tea and some breakfast. Do a little bit around the house, perhaps they listen to a bit of radio or watch a telly. And then, around about 9 o'clock, they come out of their houses and walk into town, perhaps go round to a friend's house, have a bit of a chat there, go into town, into one of the coffee shops and have a cup of tea there, walk around the shops... Then they have their lunch, perhaps they go home or to a friend's house, they might have lunch there, or again outside somewhere. Some of them are in the Virgin Active Centre that I go to, and they do these, uh, I don't think they're in the gym, but oh, yes, there are, actually there are. A couple of the old boys are in the gym, they're much older than me. I see them in the gym, and a couple of the old boys look a bit more crippled uh, than perhaps, uh, perhaps that's the wrong word to say. Sorry if that offended someone. Uh... Shall we say less active? Okay. So we say less active than some of the others. And they go in the swimming pool. Not all of them swim. A couple of them simply walk up and down. Because I think it's very, very important to keep moving. Everyone says that. More exercise is good. Very important to keep moving. If you can't swim as long as you do something. Do not fall in the seat and do nothing all day. Because you'll be very quickly in that box. All right? Um, uh, so they do that, then they have the lunch, then they have potter about a little bit more, maybe have a little nap in the afternoon, and then they go and do things with grandchildren, or go around to their children's houses, which are probably married, or, or with baby, or something like that, and they go and help out there, I suppose. You know, but they don't have to worry about going to work. I think the best part of it all is the grandchildren. My sister loves nothing more than going round to see her grandchild, Evie. And another one coming soon from my niece. Her date for having the baby has now passed. It hasn't popped its little head out yet. But that should have been, I believe, Thursday. So she's going to become a nanny all over again in just a few days' time. And, of course, me, a great uncle. And I don't think it's too bad at all getting old. You have all this thing in your teenage, oh, I don't want to get old, this, that and the other. It ain't bad at all, you know. There's plenty to do if you look for something to do. Don't sit in the chair looking bored all the time. Or falling in front of the telly. But do watch the telly. I watch the telly. There are certain things I watch. Uh, I'm really, really, really enjoying the new series of Dallas at the moment. Is anyone else watching that? Dallas here in the UK. Channel 5 on Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock. Now, I gather the viewing figures are not doing too well at the moment. But in my opinion, that's because it's on Channel 5. And quite frankly... The, the whole presentation of programmes on Channel 5 is dire. It's absolutely dire. Uh, there are so many adverts, it's unbelievable. You get, like, you get the opening credits, uh, which incidentally, are, the, the opening credits seem to be smaller. I'm not as impressed. I think they, they need to make them longer, you know, with the music, because it's all part of the show. And again, at the end, the opening credits seem to be very, very... Sh the closing credits seem to be very, very short. I think they should make that longer with a complete theme tune. But on Channel 5, there seems to be a hell of a lot of adverts in that. 
and it's ruining the programme. Not only that, as I said to you, the presentation is awful. The adverts don't always seem to come at the correct point. Now, if you're watching Dallas... Uh, in the UK, you may notice sometimes they have a little, they have a scene and then it fades to black. Okay? Before the next, it doesn't chop, it fades to black. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that is where the program makers want you to put the advertisements. But it doesn't always seem to come there. And you'll be halfway through the thing and then bang, on come the adverts as quick as that. And I, I, I think that's why uh, the ratings aren't as good as they could be. I'm sure if the show was on the BBC or even ITV, it would be doing a lot better than it is there. And I think the programme makers have probably shot them in the foot. Oh, yeah, they've gone to the highest bidder, obviously, which is Channel 5. Um, did the BBC bid for it? We don't know. We don't know. But uh, my guess is they've gone for the highest bidder, which is Channel 5. But... I, I, I just hope they don't take it off because the, the ratings have halved in three weeks. It's gone to from three million, I think, to one and a half million, which is which is I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing. Mind you, gone are the days when I suppose, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22 million people used to watch one program. I mean, we're not in that era anymore, are we? Because there's so many different channels. Anyway, going back to the old people, I, I really don't think it's that bad at all getting old. You know, watching what they get up to each day. As long as you've got your friends around you and family and things to do, it's it's not so bad after all, is it? Are you of an older generation? Perhaps you'd like to tell me about your day. Tell me what you do during a day. By email, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, iPhone 5, have you got it? Have you got your iPhone 5 yet? No, me no, no. Uh, my contract, fortunately, comes up for renewal in October. And then I shall be getting, I have no interest in any other telephone other than an iPhone 5. So I've got that to look forward to uh, in about a month's time or so. Meanwhile, uh, those of you with Apple, Apple iPhones, did you download the new operating system? iOS 6, I think it is now, isn't it? I did that, no problems at all, except to say uh, Skype, for some reason, one of my apps stopped working, so I just reinstalled that. I deleted it and reinstalled, and that started working all right. And uh, also, there was a problem with the Wi-Fi, um, uh, which was cured. I don't know if anyone else has had this, if you've downloaded the new operating system on your iPhone and then couldn't connect to your Wi-Fi after that. The secret is to switch it into airplane mode, okay, thus forcing it onto Wi-Fi, then it won't use the 3G. And once it's done that, switch it back again and it seems to find it okay. Uh, but unfortunately, because I had the iPhone 4 and not the iPhone 4S, the new operating system doesn't work with, like, for example, there's certain things I can't do. Find a friend and um, FaceTime over 3G, which I can't do, unfortunately. So a little bit disappointed. But next month, all will be well. All righty. Oh, and the other thing they always do, the, the elderly people, certainly in Wokingham, you see them walking around Waitrose in there. We've got a lovely supermarket, Waitrose. And all the old dears, they've all got the makeup and the lipstick and the hair's all been done just to go shopping. They've got those little trolleys. And that, they must go in there for an hour, an hour and a half, I reckon, talking to me. I talk to them. I talk to them. Oh, that's the other thing. You, as, as you're cycling through Wokingham, you've only got to look at someone over on a path and nod. Everyone says good morning to you. Which is a thing, um, you know, that's, that's disappeared over time, don't you think, in a lot of places? Let me just blow my nose. <sighs> See, I could turn the microphone off when I blow my nose, but you wouldn't get the full effect of the show then, would you? What's it like where you are? Do people say good morning to you? It's the same where my sister lives, in, in, uh, in uh, Woodhall Spa. Here in Bracknell, yeah, it, 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 is, it is and it isn't. Not everyone does it, you know. You know these 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 new mothers in their t 
tight tracksuits who are very overweight, pushing the prams. They don't say hello. Oh, no, 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 no. They can't. You say hello to them and like, their, their faces are like thunder. I mean, you know, I do wonder what sad, pathetic lives these people live. You know, maybe they're not happy with their lives. That's why they look so miserable all the time. But the elderly people always say hello. We love it. So perhaps it's not so bad at all getting elderly. Are you elderly? Tell me about it. What do you do during the daytimes? My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, boys and girls, uh, email time. Let's say hi to Spirit Dove Oklahoma on the YouTube. Hi, Marge. Hi, Marge. Who says, I needed a chance to relax. Glad you uploaded something. Oh, this is this is a little bit serious. Uh, my brother was in an accident. My brother is OK, but a young man ran into the back of his 18 wheeler with his Nissan and has since passed away. Twenty two years old. Would you like to know how this happened? The boy who crashed the car was texting and driving, texting, you know, on your mobile phone. God, I have seen that so many times. I've seen that so many times. And uh, Marge says, guys, stop texting and driving. Anyway, time to relax. That's a terrible thing. 22 years old, texting and driving. Have you seen it before? I think I've seen it on the motorway. You know, when you're doing 70 mile an hour, that's uh, more than a mile a minute, isn't it? And you, you look down to even text one word. I don't know. H-E-L-L-O. You look up again and you see how far you've, you, you've actually moved. The thing is, you don't always move in a straight line, do you? That's, the thing. That's how the police know you're texting, because often when people are texting, and I've seen it myself, they go from side to side because they're not looking at the road. We have here in this country um, uh, a law against using your mobile phone and driving at the same time, but it doesn't seem to be affecting people. I still see people on their mobile phones, phone to ear. I've seen it around roundabouts. Phone in one hand on ear, going round a roundabout with one hand. Christ almighty, no wonder, I don't know why there isn't more, uh, more accidents, to be honest. I really don't. Um, where are we now? So there we are. Uh, sorry, I was, got all these stories here. But I must do emails as well. Hello to Ian in Ottawa. Duffy512 on the, uh, uh, YouTube, who says... Entertaining show as usual, Ian in Ottawa. Thank you very much, Ian. He's talking about the last show, of course. And your little videos. I do see your little videos, Ian. Hello to John Golding. Hello, John Golding in Croydon. Am I right? You see, I've got a good memory. Who says, cheers, Chris. After a long, awful night, it was so lovely to come home and have something to cheer me up. Well, that wasn't me, was it? Did you buy yourself a bag of cheese and onion crisps? We like cheese and onion crisps. Oh, Walkers have some new cheese and onion crisps out there. Quite thick ones. Keep an eye out for those in your local supermarket. Yes, indeed. Uh, hello to James Bates, who says, Hi, Chris. You were talking about people knocking things over in a supermarket and not picking them up or spilling something and not notifying staff to do it. This really winds me up, as someone can have a nasty accident. Yes, they will. Even worse if they're texting as well at the same time. I know someone who broke their leg in a supermarket because of this. I'm glad you have highlighted this as a concern. Well, it's not just supermarkets, um, James. It's just people generally outside anywhere. They knock something off. They tell no one. They don't pick it up. And it's just so uncourteous. It really is. I'm not concerned about anyone other than their own welfare. He says, I also wonder if this has a financial burden on the supermarket with people suing the supermarket and it's not even their fault. I bet it is. I bet it is. But here in the UK, we now have this suing culture, which I'm afraid came across from the States. Uh, uh, the, the, the times when we were watching programmes from the States, people were always suing everyone, left, right and centre for everything. That never used to happen here. But in more recent years, in the last... 10, 15 years or so, I think it has. It happens uh, quite a lot here now. You know, you've only got to 
fall over and say, oh, I'm going to sue you. It's all about money. All about money when sometimes it's just a perfectly, you know, innocent accident. James says, if only people would think first, as for putting Katie's pills in butter, you can try it, but I know my own cat that they are like us and they don't like something or don't like doing something, then what can you do? Oh, well, you can't force a cat to do anything. I don't know where she has gone now. Oh, she's right. <laughs> she's right behind me on the floor. He says, but I wouldn't have it any other way with my cat. She makes me laugh. Her bowl is on a mat, and on a couple of occasions, she has pulled the bowl towards me, and it looks at me to feed her. Does she really? <laughs> the only thing with my, I've noticed with a cat, and it's a good job I've got a stone floor in the uh, kitchen. When I put her food in the bowl, often she drags it out of the bowl onto the floor and makes an awful mess while she's, while she's eating. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, is there a letter? Thank you. Did you like that? It was like being on the news. That was my best friend. He doesn't like to be involved in the show anymore, I'm afraid. There we are. <laughs> Can you see the hand? Look at the hand. I've just seen Katie. Look at her. Look, she's quite happy down there, isn't she? Isn't she? I've just uh, got some... Look, do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? I've just got something from Amazon. Okay. It is... The most fantastic comedy series I've ever seen. That I showed you. That that he showed me, my best friend. Come and say hello, love. No, I've waved. I'm busy. Oh, no, come and show your face. Oh, no, not with my Does hair the like cat, I think the cat wants to go with you. Not with my hair like this. Call her. Come call on. her. Does no, she, she want to go? No, she's sitting there. Okay. Uh, just, just cutting into this email for a second. You've got to buy this DVD, right? Uh, is this on Sky at the moment? Sky 1 HD, second series. What time? Okay, this, the second series of this is on Sky Television at the moment, which I don't have. I don't have any. I refuse to pay for subscription television. Uh, there's, enough, there's enough free stations on Freeview. I have Freeview and Freesat. I don't pay for anything. But if you've got Sky One, you have got to watch the TV series Trolled. Okay? It is hilarious. Series two is on at the moment. I have just bought series one. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic trolled and it's about these people that work in a supermarket and you you do actually believe that they are really like this okay uh some little stars in there that i recognize let me see does it say who's in it uh jane horrocks she played bubbles in absolutely fabulous mark addy uh and who else is in this? There's some others I recognise, but I can't remember what programmes they're in. So if you want something, and it's hilarious. It's a little bit rude in places, OK? This is absolutely hilarious. Don't know why it's on Sky One. Not everyone can see it on there. Do buy that. Uh, from Amazon, I've just ordered this, and it was £6.99, £1.49. Uh, it was £8.48 with a postage, OK? Series one of Trolled is out on DVD now. Please buy it and watch it. It's hilarious. Good. Back to this email then. Um, yes. James says, some people that have visited me have even thought I've had ghosts here, but no such luck. It's been the cat. And that's from James. Thank you, James. Always a pleasure to uh, hear from you, sir. Uh, hello to lovely Marge. Hello, Marge. Who says... If this email is too long, I will not write as much next time. You said to put all my comments in one email, so here goes. I didn't proofread this, so it's a bit rough. Like me. Rough. We're all rough together. I commented that I was listening to your Saturday the 15th uh, of September talk show. This is a venting episode, she says. Ah, incidentally, the last show and probably this one are probably uh, much longer than some of you may be used to. Now, I used to do three hour long shows a week. At the moment, I'm doing one show a week, uh, but newer viewers who are with us sort of at the beginning of the year um, will certainly notice that the show for them is now longer because it was only about 20 minutes long before. Are you finding the shows a bit long? OK, I would like your input on that one. Are you finding the shows a bit long? Do I need to reduce it? I know the last week's one was nearly an hour long again. Please let me know what you think on that one. My guess is, my guess is, 
people that watch the show on YouTube will think it's too long. But people that listen to the show on their iPods are going to tell me it's not too long. So please, can I have the, your input on that? Do you watch or listen to the show? And whichever method you use, are you finding the shows too long, too short, or just about right? Please let me know on the email, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk I don't think the people in, in, listening on iPods think it's too long because a lot of you listen on the car, don't you? You plug it into your car. And I'm the same. I download all sorts of things, uh, uh, talking things. I don't download music, really. Um, but talking shows I download, like, from the BBC, Radio 4, um, Steve Allen on LBC, Dr. Carl on Triple J. I download a science program. I download and I play them in the car, you know. So I, I, that's why I think that I'm guessing that. Please let me know. The length of the show and the method that you watch or listen. Okay, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Marches, I agree with that uh, uh, about Chris. Sorry, I agree, Chris, about how people toss things around. Like you said, I'm the same way myself. I can't stand people that go into parks and they toss their cups and trash right beside a trash bin. Even yes, um, that's right. I sometimes I'm driving along the motorway and suddenly, you know, the entire contents of a McDonald's bag comes out the window. Isn't it awful? Why are people like that now? Why can't they just take it home and put it in their rubbish um, uh, uh, bins at home? Why does it have to go out the window? And so, oh, that's what annoys me. Cigarette ends. You know, again, you're driving along. You notice it more at night when suddenly this little little red thing flashing away comes flying past you at the window in front of you, the car in front of you. She says, good thing I wasn't a big muscled guy who you jumped on and then an old lady you might have been beaten up. She's talking, of course, about the old woman I had to tell off the other day in a co-op because she knocked some stuff over and, and didn't pick them up. And she knew she'd done it. She's just going to walk off. So I told her, dear. More about that in the last show. Did you miss it? Okay. Well, you can find all my old shows at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All the old shows are there. Uh, going right back, six, is it six years now? Six and a half years? I don't know now. Five and a half. Can't remember. Can't remember. Unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is where you'll find all these shows, all right? Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, I was talking about water bills, water meters. OK, a man did come to I thought it was going to fit my water bill, uh, my water meter uh, last week. But indeed, last Monday, wasn't it? But indeed, he was only there to do a survey. Oh, God's sake. It's only there to do a survey. And he marked it. Up. It's a joke, isn't it? You know, it really is. Only in England. Only in England. So this bloke comes along and marks the point on the street where the water meter is to be fitted. And then, are you ready for this? Six to eight weeks later, another man comes to fit the meter. <laughs> you know, <coughs> why, why, <coughs> oh dear, why does that take so blooming long? Oh, I'm going to sneeze now. It's all respiratory today, it really is. Oh. <coughs> dear, dear me. Of course, the cat's in the room. That's probably what's doing this, the mum. Anyway, so she goes on. Oh, my mate, my mate, you just saw there. Well, you saw his hand, didn't you? <coughs> my mate was uh, going to have a water meter fitted as well. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Excuse me. So after me, the bloke went up there. Now, I don't understand. The bloke was quite pleasant here. He walks in. I said, do you want like, a cup of tea, mate? I said, yeah. No, he says, all right, I'm okay. So I didn't make him a cup of tea. Uh, but he went up my mate's house, and my mate said he was a right miserable old git. He was... <sighs> <coughs> he was fine with me. No problem at all with me. Must be him, because he... He can be a bit miserable. He can be a bit miserable, my mate, sometimes. Oh, yeah. Or a bit camp in front of people. He likes to be camp in front of people, you know. He does like to be a bit camp. 
Anyway, so <laughs> he then went up to my mate's house, and uh, unfortunately, they couldn't find the water stopcock. You know the tap in the house where you turn the water on and off? I knew exactly where mine was. It's right as you come in the front door, it's there on the left, you know. But in my mate's house, it had been hidden away somewhere. So he told him, well, unless you can find a stopcock, you can't have a meter put in. So then we spent a couple of days looking for this stopcock. And it, we found it eventually, you know, right underneath, behind the cupboards, in another cupboard. Oh, it, it was hidden well, but we found it now. Anyway, uh, Marge goes on to say, well, we have a well water here, so we only get electric bills, so we live in the country. So you have your own well? Your own well in the ground? Or do you share that well with other people, or is it just you? How does that work, Marge? Do you have... I, I, I'm assuming you don't have to put a bucket in and wind a handle and the water comes out. Is this like some sort of pump in there, or what? Do let me know more. I'm, I'm interested in that, Marge. Any chance I could have a picture of your well where you get your water in? And show me how it all works. She says, uh, get the toilet changed out for the ones that saves water and take a bucket. <laughs> take a bucket bath. <laughs> well, you know I've got a water butt, don't you? I've got two water butts which are now fitted and working perfectly. Thank you very much. She says, uh, five gallon bucket, fill that and use only that. The money you save, you can travel on vacations all over the world. Well, Marge, you know, I've been very lucky uh, in my life so far. I've been to some wonderful, wonderful places, but I've said this once so many times before to you uh, here on the show. I actually do not like traveling. <laughs> Aeroplanes have got to be the worst form of transport ever, even when you save up for the posh seats. It is so goddamn boring sitting on a plane. It really is. It's not like you can run up and down or go swimming or something or, you know, or do something. I just hate travelling. I haven't been somewhere now for nearly a year. Last time I went somewhere was Las Vegas. That was for a week. American Airlines I went with never again. My God, that was the worst airline ever. They are as miserable as sin on there. Uh, so some people say, some people, uh, I t talk to other people and say, oh, they're really old on there. Now, that doesn't bother me at all, the age of people. They are just so goddamn miserable, the airline staff on uh, American Airlines. Not only that, it was the most uncomfortable seat I have ever sat in, in an aeroplane, in my entire life. It was awful. Never, never again. So... Uh, I, I, I'm not keen on travelling. I've done a couple of cruises. I did enjoy that. I did enjoy cruising. I really did, yeah. She says, uh, where is the camera when you need it? I would have loved watching you working with the pipe. What, you mean the pipe that came, you mean the drain pipe that fell off? Yes. You see, if you've only just joined us, you will have missed that show. You've got to be here every week. Got to be here every week. It's like a book, you know. It's like a book, you know. How would you like it if you were reading a book and I took... A chapter out. That's what happens when you miss a show. It is. Um, <clears throat> Marge says, Chris, I pulled out the four-cylinder motor on my Datsun pickup once and had to rebuild it. Had it rebuilt? She says, yes, I did it myself. It took eight hours to pull it. Two days to put it back in. My God. Marge, I'm impressed. She says, what happened later, it started up and it went bang, bang. Sounds like a piston pin broke or something broke in the motor. So finally, after asking two mechanics, they suggested taking the motor back due to what they thought it had not been rebuilt correctly. I pulled back the transmission in order to begin pulling it out again. And guess what? I had not tightened the flywheel and the bolts were loose. That's what made the noise. So never do things in a hurry when putting it back together. Well, you're braver than me, I tell you. I wouldn't attempt to do anything on my car. I could probably change the oil, do simple things like that, but I certainly couldn't do that. Um, my nephew and my brother-in-law can do things like that. They recently changed the four-wheel... Oh, I don't know. What was this thing? A possible, was it a four-wheel drive unit that he's got in, in, in his Freelander, in his Land Rover Freelander? Because it broke. And they replaced it for a total charge of £400 for the parts. And that the, I think the garage quoted them £1,200 to do that. My nephew and my brother-in-law did it together. How fantastic it is to be able to do things like that. It is, isn't it? You know. 
Uh, March says, you got screwed at screws fixed place. How funny. Yeah, screw, screw fix. Awful. Awful shop in Bracknell. Screw fix. Dreadful, dreadful, dreadful customer service. And a woman in there so rude that she shouldn't have the job. She says, how funny. Some people bring their home problems to work. I agree. They need to leave it at home and keep, treat customers right. Well, I try to, I tell you. March says, Chris, my church has this bracelet you need to wear for 21 days. It says, no complaining. <laughs> Is that what it says on the bracelet? She says, if you ever complain, you have to place it on the other wrist and wear it for another 21 days. <coughs> my... Come closer. My best mate likes complaining. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's always getting things, you know, vouchers and things like that for the post. You want to hear him go when he's, when, he's on the phone to, when he's on the phone to a company or someone complaining. It's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. I've, I've sat in the living room when him, when, with his boyfriend once, and uh, he's, he's going, going tens of a dozen on the phone at some company or, or, or something. He's... His latest moan is his car. He's got a B. He's got a lovely car, BMW, and uh, something he took it in for repair. And uh, since the repair, it's gone back about two or three times now. The latest thing is the wheels, where they've painted the wheels. The the, the paint he, he says is coming off. You, you don't miss a thing. I tell you that now. Don't miss a thing. Uh, do you have a picture of your car online? She says. No, I don't at the moment, Marge. Um, I'll try. I'll try and. I'll try and get one. I don't actually have one to insert into this program. I'll try and remember to do that. She says, "Do you use Stickam anymore?" No, don't you? Don't do the show live at all anymore. You should check into Zen for meditation. It's not a religion, but it can help with those down times and help with stress, relaxing, letting go of attachments. It keeps me sane mostly. <clears throat> I have a book called Zen Teachings of Jesus. It's, if you're into stuff like that, with your health consciousness and such, I think it would really add to your life. Meditation means calming the mind. Yes, I, I, as I said to you on the last show, you know, I'm someone who, get, I do get very down sometimes. You hopefully would never see that. <coughs> I, try and, <coughs> I try and hide it, really. Uh, I'm not actually down at the moment. But uh, yeah, I get very down sometimes. Don't know why. It just, just seems to be a cloud that comes down. And I keep telling myself, you know, this will lift again, as it usually does in the end, and, and, and it does. She says, you didn't say you're feeling any relationship with America. If not America, at least Oklahoma. We love you. I certainly, excuse me, I certainly do feel a relationship with America. I certainly do. I feel cl certainly closer to America uh, than Europe. Absolutely. We are very close. I think America and the UK, uh, Australia, the Caribbean countries, we, we all are quite close together, I think. I don't know. I don't, I'm not even sure what it is that ties us together. I actually do feel a very good relationship with the States, yes. Uh, Southern fried chicken recipe, but not butter. She says, don't have butter chicken, but for a great fried chicken, I learned as a fry cook in a restaurant. Cut up whole chicken, rolled in milk and honey mix. Just mix it how you like. Flour with pepper and salt and garlic, which is optional. I like garlic roll in milk and honey again. Milk and honey. Well, that sounds nice. Flour, then deep right in skillet with Crisco oil. This is not a healthy food, but a great tasting one. Ah, well, I'm vegetarian, you see. I can't be eating any of that. Fry at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for half an hour, turning between time till it's brown and cooked well. Okay? Right, little, 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 little uh, recipe there for you to enjoy, boys and girls. <clears throat> um, for pills for the cat, mortar, pestle, believe me, great for grinding up pills, placing canned cat food. Oh, I see. Grind up the pills. Yeah, the trouble is, she doesn't always eat all of the cat food. You know, sometimes, you, and you never know. You never know with cats, do you? You put the bowl of food, is she going to eat it today or not? She may have been me meowing around you for ages and ages, and then she leaves the food. You just never know whether she's going to eat it. Uh, she says, I can't see the top of your clock. It's so dark, so didn't know it was different. Oh, can you not? No, you can't, can you? 
It is quite dark. The top of the clock, uh, the top of the clock is actually flat. Okay, the top of the, the the top of the clock at the black is actually there's no ornate thing. So actually, uh, just a second. I don't know if that is. Can, would that work? There we are. Those of you watching on YouTube should be able to see the top of the clock now. It's flat. Okay, flat. There we are. Because Marge sent in a picture of a. Uh, a clock which looks uh, one of her friend's clocks which certainly the face and the hands and the thing the pendulum is all the same do you have a donation website widget on your website for the link you use to print out emails i can donate if you like no 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 i would never ask people to donate uh, money to this no i, ju I just wouldn't do it you know I, 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 it's, it's not um i'm not doing this to make money i do this to to do a show you know i enjoy sitting here doing it and uh i enjoy it a lot because i know you enjoy it and the fact that you enjoy it means i enjoy you enjoying it do, do you get that you, you do don't you it's like these people you know stars like um okay stars like barry manilow you know tina turner people like that you kind of sometimes, sometimes why do they still perform they've got all this money they don't need to work anymore yes they do the buzz is not the money. The buzz is the performance. The buzz is getting to know that people are being entertained by something you are doing. That's the buzz. That's the buzz. I would never ask uh, for uh, uh, donations for me to do this. I wouldn't. And I don't think I'd get any anyway, except from you, Marge. <laughs> <clears throat> she says, you walked away and now your clock is hypnotising me. Were you watching when I walked away? Were you hypnotised? Tick tock, tick tock. One day you will get a significant other. Maybe they can be on your show too. I will not get... Uh, no, Marge. I, there, there is no significant other for me in this world. Please don't say that. I've had that said to me for the last... God knows... Uh, over 35 years, people have said to me, there's someone for everyone. No, there isn't. I'm sorry, I don't believe it anymore. It's all a load of old baloney. There is not someone for everyone. I am not going to find anyone. I knew when I was 16 years old. I was no, younger than that. I, I, I remember being at a holiday camps, Pontins Holidays, and... Um, Seeing my mum and dad dance there and, you know, doing those when they're doing waltzes and things like that and everyone else dancing. And I knew then that I would not find someone. I knew that then. And it's, it's just not going to happen. So please don't say that. She says, hey, if I don't send you tons of emails, I only comment on YouTube and it's sending you so many emails. I'm learning better now. I am Margie, a.k.a. Spirit Dove. I haven't had anyone ever comment back at me like you do. I feel so special. Everyone is special, Marge. Everyone is special. Might not say this on your video, but pussy means a lady's private parts in America. Oh, does it really? I didn't know that. Oh, it means a cat here, doesn't it? It's my, I call, I call my cat, my, it's my pussy. Pussy cat. Pussy is short for pussy cat. Is it a rude word? I, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. She says, got to keep your videos clean, you know. You cheered me up. <laughs> I won't comment on YouTube. No, comment on YouTube if you want. But I, if you could do me a, like, a long email with all your bits and pieces, it's a lot easier for me to pull it all together. She says, uh, thanks for being my virtual internet friend. Hugs and hugs again for Marge. So thanks for that uh, lovely email there, Marge. I do appreciate that, my darling. Okay. Hello to, uh, oh, and her cats are named, I did I read this last week, Fuzzbucket, Dayo Shin, Gita, Isis, Crackerfud, and Snuggle, Snuggle Kiss. <laughs> Lovely names. Uh, Charlie Hides TV, hello Charlie, says, I coat my dog's pills in peanut butter and they gobble them up in seconds. Job done. Welcome back, Chris. I might have read that last week. I certainly recognise that one. How are we doing? Well, we're nearly up to an hour, actually, aren't we, again? Hello to lovely Stella. Hello, Stella. You are right, darling. Stella Andrews. He says, hi, Chris. The iPhone 4 is what it is. However, which is what I've got. I've got the iPhone 4. However, the iPhone 4S is awesome. 
And on the 19th of September, the new software update, which I've already done now, uh, will have a fully work... Oh, I forgot my T's here, isn't it? Lovely. The new software update will have a fully working Siri for Europe and a live TomTom. -tom. Now, what's Siri? Oh, that's that thing where you talk into it, isn't it? Yeah, you talk in it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, not for the iPhone 4, because I've always I've already rung them up about that, and they said, no, it's not for the iPhone 4. You have to have a 4S or a 5. And a live TomTom. -tom. So looking forward to getting that on my uh, iPhone 5. Internet charges will apply unless you have an internet deal, which uh, I think most of us have now. I think I've got a 1 gig uh, allowance internet on my iPhone <laughs> The iPhone 5 has a slightly larger screen and slimmer profile, but is an overclocked iPhone 4S. I predicted problems with them, and it's come about already. The iPhone 5 is crap, says Stella Andrews. I've got to tell you, Stella Andrews, she knows all about these iPhones. Because I got into trouble on... Um, <clears throat> uh, Wednesday when I downloaded the new operating system. I told you at the beginning of the show, I couldn't connect to the uh, internet then. It wouldn't work on the uh, Wi-Fi. But she came along and told me what to do, switch it to airplane mode, forcing it onto Wi-Fi, and then switched it back again, and it was fine after that. But a topic for our viewers. Has anyone noticed phones starting to get smaller and smaller and more reliable are now getting bigger and bigger and useless? Yes! I was thinking about that the exact, exact thing the other day, uh, Stella. I remember the great big, huge brick um, mobile phones, and they were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I seem to remember my friend had a very, very small Sony. I mean, it was so small that it could easily be lost. I wouldn't want that. <clears throat> it was just so small. But phones are definitely getting larger again. A phone is for talky-talky, but now you can take pictures, listen to music, watch TV, all crap. A phone is a phone. Unless, of course, you're watching United Kingdom Talk with Chris Reardon. Great show, love it. And that's from Auntie Stella. Uh, thank you, Stella. Nice to hear from you, my darling. OK. Uh, yes, you can uh, watch the show. If you're just listening to the show, you can also watch as well by a, a few different methods. The main one being YouTube. My YouTube username is Chris Reardon UK. You see it comes up at the beginning of the uh, bottom of the screen at the end of the show, OK? Chris Reardon UK is my YouTube name. Or alternatively, just do a search in the search box for United Kingdom Talk uh, 2012 or October, September 2012, something like that, and that will bring you up the more uh, recent shows, OK? Now, I can see we, we've done almost an hour, so I've got to... Uh, <clears throat> I've got an email here from Craig, which, if it's all right with you, Craig, I'm going to hold that uh, over until next week's uh, show. All right. Uh, what is it today? Saturday today. I'm doing a 40th uh, birthday party tonight, which I'm looking forward to DJing at that uh, to my mate's pub in uh, in in. Um, in Hemel Hempstead, that was it, uh, which I'm doing this evening. He's just, he's just had it decorated, so I'm looking forward to doing that. One of the things he told me, uh, I don't know what sort of electrician he had there, but he had a light fitting to put up. <clears throat> and, you know, it had all been wallpapered over, OK? Um, you know what you do? What do you do when you've got a wire to pull through? You, you, you put a little hole in the wallpaper and pull the wire through. This idiot <laughs> cut a round circle. A large round circle around one of them. So, of course, he put the light fitting up, and the light fitting was smaller, so there's a blooming great big hole in the wallpaper. <laughs> Where do they get these builders from half the time? I really don't know. Time to go, boys and girls. Uh, any comments as well, I'd be very, very pleased uh, to hear from you. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Also, I'd like to know... Do you listen or watch the show? And whichever method you use, are you finding the shows too long, too short, or what? Please, please let me know. Same email. Anything you want to talk about, anything I've just talked about, you want to comment on, it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Don't forget the main website for the show is www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you want to come along to uh, any of my do's this week, uh, on Sunday, I'm hosting karaoke 
at 286 Bar in Lewisham High Street. That's between 8 p.m. and 1 a.m. I'm also hosting karaoke on Mondays and Wednesdays at uh, Belushi's. That's in Borough High Street, London, South East London. OK, Borough High Street, London, Belushi's. That's between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. And if you fancy a little bit of a quiz, I host a quiz night <coughs> at the Mayflower Public House. A lovely little place on the River Thames. That's on Tuesday nights between 8.30 and 11 p.m. Now, that one gets very busy, so make sure you get there nice and early. Sort of 8 o'clock, you can ring ahead, book a table if you want, but... They do ask that you turn up within 10 minutes of your booking or it gets so busy they have to let the cable go. OK, so quiz night on Tuesdays at the Mayflower in Rotherhive between 8.30 and 11 o'clock. I'm going now. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you next week from myself, Chris Reardon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye bye.